why it is satisfying some degree condition. Um, first, this is a uh, joint work with uh, Marcus Brodman at Zurich University, and you can find the preprint at archive. First, let me slowly define the degree and uh, the sectional genus of uh, a product variety. So let X be a non-degenerate irreducible product variety of dimension n. And we always assume that the co-dimension is less than, uh, bigger than or equal to 2 to avoid the hypersurface case. And then by taking the hyperplane section, we can get a sequence of sub varieties of X. If we take n minus 1 times hyperplane section, then we have uh, an irreducible curve X1 which is still a non-degenerate star variety in, in this ambient space. And if we take one more time the hyperplane section, then we have a, a finite, finite set X0. And the degree of X is defined as the cardinality of this set X0. And also, the arithmetic genus of this irreducible curve is called the sectional genus of X due to uh, professor uh, Takao Pujita. And then since X0 in, in this ambient space is non-degenerate, so the degree should be always, uh, the degree should be always bigger than or equal to its co-dimension plus one. That is, the degree should be always co-dimension plus some positive integer k and so concerning this inequality, a natural question is for each k, uh, first uh, classify all varieties of x, all varieties x, satisfying this uh, equality, and then also find the structure theory of them, that is, to describe some common properties of those varieties. Uh, today, uh, I focus on, among several Structure theory of uh, product varieties, I focus on arithmetic depths of product variety. So let me first recall the definition of uh, arithmetic depths. So again, let X be a non degenerate product variety, then the depths of X is defined as the smallest uh, positive integer i such that this cohomology, uh, this direction of cohomology group does not vanish. Then this integer is called the arithmetic depth of x. So by definition, the depth should be between 1 and uh, the dimension of x plus 1. And if it takes the maximal value, that is, if the depth is equal to the dimension plus 1, then we call x an arithmetically equivalent Macaulay variety. OK, now, uh, according to the inequality about the degree, we first consider the smallest case, that is, the degree is uh, equal to the co-dimension plus 1. In this case, x is called a variety of minimal degree. And those varieties were completely classified uh, more than 100 years ago by Del Pezzo and uh, Bottini. Uh, the result is as follows. If x is a variety of minimal degree, and if the co-dimension is at least 2, then x is either a cone of the Peronger surface or as a rational normal scroll. So now we have a complete list of varieties of minimal degree. And also their structures are very well understood in several viewpoints. First, x is always arithmetically equivalent Macaulay, and the castle of Monfort regularity of x is always equal to 2. And uh, the minimal fluid resolution is also completely understood. In particular, we know all the graded beta numbers of the ideal, uh, the homogeneous ideal. Mm. Okay, so now consider the next case. That is, x is, uh, uh, the degree of x is equal to co-dimension plus 2. In this case, we call x a variety of almost minimal degree due to uh, this notion, 
This is defined by uh, Brodmann and Schindler in their paper, in their recent paper. Well, uh, if the degree, is, degree satisfies this condition, then we cannot guarantee that X is uh, arithmetically equivalent Macaulay. So among all varieties of almost minimal degree, if the depth is maximal, then we call X a delpeto variety. That is, X is a delpeto variety if uh, it is a variety of almost minimal degree and uh, it is arithmetically equivalent Macaulay. So for those varieties, we need to study the classification and also the structure theory. First, consider the classification. And for curve case, uh, by using the Clifford theorem, one can easily classify all those curves. Uh, so x is a curve of almost minimal degree. Then it is. Then there are three kinds of such curves. First. X is an elliptic normal curve of degree i plus 1. Or X is the projected image, projection image of a rational normal curve from a point inside the second variety. Here, X tilde squared denotes the second variety of X tilde. And whereas X is, uh, again, uh, the image of, an, of a projection of rational normal scroll, a rational normal curve, but in this case, Point, the projection center P is contained in uh, outside of the second variety. So in the second in the second case, X is a cusp of a nodal curve. So its arithmetic genus is equal to one, and it is it is non-normal and arithmetically equivalent Macaulay. In third case, because the projection is isomorphic projection. X is not linearly normal, and so the depth is automatically equal to one. So in curve case, this kind of there are three kind of uh, curves of almost minimal degree, and by imitating these properties, this cl classification, for higher dimensional case, we can consider three kind of uh, right of almost minimal degree. Uh, uh, from now on, we assume that the variety X is not a cone. Then the first type is uh, X is normal variety and the embedding is linearly normal. The second type X is not normal. And the third type X is not linearly normal. So in curve case, a curve is of type 1 if it is elliptic normal curve. Type 2 if X is cusp or nodal curve. And type 3 if it is uh, the image of isomorphic projection of, uh, of rational domain curve. Now we consider the detail of this uh, three kind of varieties of almost minimal degree. First, uh, when X is a uh, uh, variety of almost minimal degree and of type 1, then it is uh, indeed uh, a normal delpeto variety, and hence it's a its linear curve section should be a uh, smooth elliptic normal curve. And in this case, because X is arithmetically equivalent Macaulay, by using the hyperplane section method, we can describe the minimal pre resolution of uh, X very precisely. And concerning the classification, the two-dimensional two -dimensional case was classified by uh, Del Pezzo. And uh, they are three full Bernoulli embedding of project plane or its inner projection up to six points. And for higher dimensional case, the classification was obtained by Takao Fujita at, in the middle of the 70s. So if the dimension is bigger than or equal to three, then the degree four case, that is the co-dimension is two. In this case, X is a complete intersection of two quadrics. And for degree five, X is either the sixth dimensional Grossmannian or its linear sections. And also for degree six, seven, and eight case, this type of provides the complete classification. Uh, so here, the classification is for only for smooth case. 
And indeed, he considered the, the classification into two parts. First, uh, he considered smooth case, and then next, uh, singular case. And uh, for normal case, also, he gave some precise, precise description of those uh, varieties. Okay, so now we turn to the type 2 case. If the variety is of type 2, that it, it is not normal, then we can study this variety by using its normalization. And its normalization is uh, also embedded in the I plus one dimensional projective space. <laughs> and then by degree counting, we know that this should be a variety of smooth variety of uh, minimal degree. Here, the smoothness condition comes from the complete classification of varieties of minimal degree and uh, that our variety X is not a cone. And since X is not normal, the projection should be singular. That is, the projection center should be contained in the second variety of X tilde. And third type also comes from the linear projection. Because it is not linearly normal, we can consider the complete embedding of X. And again, by degree counting, we know that the complete embedding is a smooth variety of minimal degree. And also, because it is, X is not linearly normal, the so center should be outside of the second variety. And in this case, so one can easily check that the depth is equal to 1. So uh, in the viewpoint of arithmetic depth, type 1 and type 3 are well understood. But only three types can be appeared for any case. Well, here. Yeah. There are two uh, viewpoints, normality and linear normality. Uh -huh. So clearly, there are three kinds of such varieties. The other case of the almost linear is no. Pardon? The other case of minimal minimal What I mean, for any class of varieties, we can divide it as three types in the viewpoint of <laughs> <laughs> normality and linear normality. <laughs> Okay, so now to understand the variety of minimal degree, uh, almost minimal degree of type 2 and type 3, we consider the linear projection of smooth varieties of minimal degree. That is, here x tilde is a uh, variety of minimal degree uh, embedded in I plus 1 dimensional space, and P is a point outside of x tilde. And we consider xp as the projection image of x tilde from P. Then x tilde is always a variety of minimal, uh, almost minimal degree. And today I want to describe the arithmetic depth of uh, xp according to the location of uh, point p. Because xp is obtained as the image of linear projection, it is natural to expect that there is a precise relation between the between all properties of xp and uh, the location of p with respect to the original variety. Mm -hmm. And to study the linear projection, I first uh, define the second cone and the second locus. So here I consider an arbitrary non-degenerate variety and a point outside of x tilde. Then the second cone and the second locus are defined as follows. First, the second cone is the union of all lines passing through P such that the line meet with X and most at two points. So concerning the linear projection, these lines, if X is a, a point in X tilde and in in a line in this form, then the projection map fails to be isomorphic near that point. Okay, I give a, a reduced scheme structure on this set, and then we can define the second locus as 
the scheme theoretic intersection of x tilde and the second cone. So the second cone, uh, second locus is just the set of all points in x tilde such that the projection map fails to be isomorphic near that point. And also this projection map is bidirectional if and only if this set is a prop sub scheme of x tilde. And concerning the linear projection of uh, varieties of minimal degree, uh, Brodman and Schenzel obtained some nice result describing the relation between the projection point and uh, the arithmetic depth. First, uh, the possible type of the second uh, cone is only linear space. So either it is zero dimensional linear space and the second uh, locus is empty, or else the second cone is uh, positive dimensional linear space and uh, the second locus is a uh, hyperquadratic uh, quadratic hypersurface in this linear space. And the arithmetic depth is determined by the second locus or the second cone by the following formula. Depth of xp is always equal to s plus 2, where here s is uh, the dimension of uh, the second locus. Now, as an example, we consider the Veronese surface case. So, we choose a point P in the second variety of uh, the Veronese surface. Then, a well-known fact is the second uh, cone at P is just plain, because uh, the Veronese surface is uh, set out by plain conics. And so, the, the second cone is plain, and the second locus is uh, a smooth plane conic. And then by using the previous formula, the depth of xp is equal to 3. And hence, this surface is uh, a non-normal telepetro surface. It is arithmetically quite macaulay. And so now the remaining problem is to understand the case where x tilde is uh, rational normal score. Now let me... Uh, define the rational domain score in standard method. So let a1 up to an be an increasing sequence of positive integers, and x tilde is the corresponding rational domain score, having numerical type a1 up to an. And consider the linear projection of x tilde from a point p inside the second variety. And According to Brudman Schenzel's theorem, the problem to understand the arithmetic behavior of XP is equivalent to uh, investigate the, the structure of second locus of X tilde at the projection center P. More precisely, the second cone is now a positive dimensional linear space, and the second locus is a quadratic hypersurface in its span, and its depth is given by uh, this formula. Okay, so first we considered, uh, to obtain a more complete answer, we considered the, the possible structure of second locus. And the result is as follows. The possible type of second uh, locus is uh, first uh, the second cone is line, and hence the second locus is uh, either a double point or else two distinct point, two simple points. And if the second cone is plain, then uh, because it, the second locus is uh, hyperquadratic, uh, it is either a double line or the union of two lines or a smooth plane conic, but the double line case does not occur. So there are two cases, smooth conic or the union of two coplanar lines. And if the dimension is three, then in this case, the second locus should be smooth. So it is smooth quadratic hypersurface. And 
these are all the possible uh, type of the second locus. So there are six possibilities of the second locus if we include the empty case. The sketch of the theorem is very simple. Uh, the second locus is a sub variety or subset of uh, the original variety x tilde. And x tilde has a natural projection bundle map to projective line because it is less than the normal scroll. And so let f be the restriction of the projection bundle map to the second locus. Then, because this is quadratic hypersurface, uh, we can easily classify all possible type of the second locus by using this map. There are only finitely many kind of uh, maps from a quadratic hypersurface to projective line. But here, uh, a problem was that was to, to uh, rule out the case where the second locus is a double plane. And to, uh, to rule out this case, we investigate the intersection of tangent space at two points of the of X tilde. So by using these two tools, we can obtain the, we can obtain this classification. So now there are six possibilities. And then to complete this, uh, to solve this problem completely, what I mean, to solve the problem describing the arithmetic depths, now we need to decompose the ambient space according to the structure of the second locus. Uh, let me first explain that for any such kind of uh, second locus described in the previous theorem, we can realize that second locus by choosing an appropriate pair of x tilde and the position center p. If the point, uh, if the second locus is double point, then we can realize this example from rational normal curve case. If we choose a p inside the tangent variety, then uh, then the second locus should be a double point. And if we choose p outside of the tangent variety, then the second locus should be the union of two simple points. And the second case, that is, when the second cone is projective plane, this case can be realized from this example. Uh, if we choose a point P here, then the, uh, maybe, let me draw a picture. So one, two is the school by taking rulings line and uh, the plane conic. And so if we choose, if we fix a ruling and consider the span of uh, this line section and the ruling, then for any point in this plane, the second uh, locus should be the union of these uh, two lines. So at that point, the second locus is the union of two lines, two coplanar lines. And uh, okay. So if we choose a point in the span of uh, the plane conic section, then clearly the second locus should be this uh, plane conic. So these two cases can be realized from this example. So the smooth quadratic surface case, uh, smooth quadratic surface is P1 times P1. And so that is uh, as a sub variety. This uh, tripled has uh, S11 as a sub variety. And so if we consider the P3 spanned by this uh, smooth quadratic surface, and if we choose a point on this three space, then the second locus should be that quadric, smooth quadratic surface. And so these, re these uh, six possibilities always occur. Okay, so now, uh, now I will explain how to 
decompose the ambient space according to uh, the structure of the second locus. So red pi be the set of symbols where here this is clearly empty and this is the double point. This is the union of two simple points and this is the union of two lines where two lines, two, two coplanar lines and the C denotes smooth plane conic and the Q denotes uh, smooth quadratic surface. And then for each element in this set of symbols, we define the second uh, strata of the field as follows. This is the set of all points P such that the second locus is equal to the star, an element in this <coughs> set of symbols. So clearly, now from the classification result, the ambient space minus the variety should be the disjoint union of this second strata. And also clearly, the second uh, locus is empty if and only if the point is outside of the second variety. And now uh, I will describe each stratum uh, in geometric terms to uh, state the result precisely. Let me first uh, define the notation. So x tilde, uh, the numerical type, in the numerical type, there are k times 1 and n minus k times 2. And this part will be denoted by 1 on the bar, and this part will be written as 2 on the bar. Then a is the span of uh, this part and B is the union of uh, the sub-variety S1 part and uh, X tilde and U is the join of A and uh, delta here. Delta is uh, this part is the segregate product of uh, a plane conic and uh, an appropriate linear space. And so delta denotes the union of all spans of such plane conics. And then the second locus is union of two simple points if and only if P is outside of tangent variety and uh, double point if uh, P is in tangent variety and uh, outside of the union of P and U. And in this way, we can describe the exact location of P depending on the structure of the second locus. Um, in particular, by using this class classification, we can classify all uh, non-normal delpecho varieties. Let me Concerning the linear projection, we describe the, the structure, of the type of X tilde, and also the location of P. The result is, uh, in curve case, curve case is easy. In surface case, uh, X tilde should be in this form, and also we can describe the point, the location of the point by using the those uh, subsets described in the previous CRM. Anyway, there are eight, seven kind of uh, numerical type of X tilde, and for each case is we describe the location of P exactly. Mm. Well, now I will compare this result with the classification by Taka Fujita. So if X is normal delpecho variety, then the dimension and the, the degree should be one of the following pairs. The dimension is bounded by 6, and also the degree is bounded by 8. And in our case, if X is non-normal, then the dimension is bounded by 3, but the degree can take all values bigger than or equal to 5. Okay, now let me 
return to the description of the second stratification. Well, although this result gives precise uh, stratification, if we have a precise point, then it is not easy to determine the second locus because it is difficult to check if a, if a point is contained in A or B or C. So, uh, now I will, uh, I will describe the defining equations of this strata. <coughs> so let x tilde be the rational domain square. k times 1 and minus k times 2. Then I will write the coordinate in the following way. For this line, I use x10, x11. And for the last line, I use x uh, k0, xk1. And for two part, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and for last term, n minus k, 0, 1. and the remaining part will be denoted by z. So, These coordinates are related to this part and it's related to the two part and this is related to the remaining part. And I write this as x, y, and z. Then X tilde can be described as a, a locus of some determinant, or some matrix. That is, x tilde is the set of points such that the length is less than or equal to 2. So x tilde is described as the 2 by 2 minus of this matrix. And the second variety of x tilde is also described as uh, the locus of uh, some uh, matrix that is y one zero And x tilde square, the second variety of x tilde is the set of points where the length of the nx is now less than or equal to uh, 2. Okay, so concerning the stratification of the ambient space according to the second locus, 
Uh, first, uh, you can observe that length of uh, NP is equal to 0. That means that the point has no non-zero part in Y and Z. So this means that A, P is contained in the span of S1 part. That is the set A. And hence, um, in this case, the depth of XP is equal to uh, 4 by, by broadman changes result. And also the length is equal to maximal when only P is outside of the second variety and if n only the depth is equal to 1. So at least these two uh, cases, the depth 4 case and depth 1 case, are described by using this matrix. And in this way, I Rain theorem is choose a point outside of F tilde, then the depth of XP is indeed 4 minus the length of this matrix. And so because for a given point, we can easily calculate the length of this matrix. So this result provides some computational method to determine the length of uh, the depth of the image. Uh, well, because I have still uh, some time, so. Here today I will I described the arithmetic property of varieties of almost minimal degree. So now for ten minutes I will explain some another aspects of uh, this film. To study the arithmetic properties of uh, the image, we use this projection map. But to study another properties of XP, one can use the so-called embedding scroll of XP. That is, in for any P, XP, the image is contained in another rational normal scroll of dimension n plus 1. And because uh, Y is uh, uh, two regular variety, we can study the uh, defining equations and the <laughs> CGDs of XP by using this variety. But there is another very close relation. Uh, what I mean, Y contains also another important information about XP. The first one is. The singularity of XP is equal to the vertex of this rational normal scroll. And so depth, is, depth can be also computed by using this embedding scroll. This is just the dimension of the vertex plus 2. Uh, 
É aí que tu até fez, ó. Between two and the end, then y is unique. Oh, it's unique as I said, not as the as concerning the numerical type. As I said, this is unique. And so, uh, so if we denote the dimension of uh, the vertex as S, then the numerical type of Y is in this form, and this part explains the arithmetic part of X. And clearly, because that is determined by this part, if we take height plane section to maybe S times, then this and the XP has the same, uh, the same uh, graded Betty numbers. And this is contained in this uh, lesser normal scroll. And one can show that the Betty numbers of uh, this variety is uniquely determined by this type. So, uh, in consequence, this part uh, governs the arithmetic property of XP, and this part determines the uh, homological part of the image. Okay, thank you.